Welcome to Evolution in Controls. I'm your host, Tim Wilson. Thank you for joining us. When you think about the mobile industry, an image of what piece of equipment comes to mind? Is it an agricultural machine or perhaps a piece of construction equipment? Undoubtedly, you would not be wrong, and these applications play a significant role. But are you perhaps overlooking a rather significant chunk of the mobile marketplace? Is there another type of equipment that is so ubiquitous that becomes almost unnoticed? If the mobile equipment market is defined by anything that is on track, treads, or wheels, then there is another type of equipment that surrounds us on a daily basis and yet oftentimes goes unrecognized. That piece of equipment would be the versatile work truck, an essentially vanilla platform on which an astonishingly wide variation of modifications are added, turning that platform into a dedicated work tool. And those work tools are more often than not loaded with hydraulic technology. Technology that is growing ever more sophisticated, capable, and complex. Fleet owners and operators are only now beginning to recognize the advantages that can be realized by embracing this technological change. The future of the work truck is changing, but will some in the industry be left out? With us today to discuss the future of work trucks is Mr. Kevin Kegerice, Vice President of Mobile Sales at Morell Group, and Mr. Brad Bardall, Regional Vice President of Sales for the Bosch Rexroth Group. Brad, Kevin, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you for having you. us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys are repeat guests to Evolution and Controls. but Frequent flyers almost. Frequent flyers. I'm not giving any points for the miles. <laughs> <now. laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Let's just introduce each other, e ourselves, and just how long you've been in the industry and with, with your companies. Sure. Sure, I've been with uh, Tim, I've been with Bosch Rexroth for 26 years within the engineering machinery uh, area for about 35 years. And previously, I, I was, was the uh, manager for work trucks for really? Bosch Rexroth for on road applications. So, so you know something about so what we're going to talk little, about. This is a little dear to my heart, these work trucks. Yes, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So Brad started when I was in fourth grade, Tim. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's just great. You know, that's exactly. when he started with Rex Ross. Uh, so exactly. can't say I've been around that long, but I've been with Merrill 23 years. Okay. Working in the mobile industry uh, specifically and moved in my role of current running mobile sales for, for Morell uh, right now. So. All right. Well, Brad, you started us off on the topic work trucks. Talk yeah. to me about it. What yeah, are they? Well, they're, we, we consider work trucks really any, any commercially available chassis that a superstructure is put onto um, to perform work. Uh, so on the board is a classic example, a class seven truck with, um, with, um, with a superstructure, in this case, an aerial, aerial platform for utility work. However, that could be anything. It could be a crane, right? It could be a digging derrick. Could be what else, Kevin? It could be a could, could be, be a, a mechanics truck. Yeah. Could be super sewer maintenance on down the line. So it started out. There, there's a cab. There's a there's an, a diesel engine or maybe a gas engine on a, a cab. Is that what it started out? And there was nothing on the back That's except right. for maybe a couple of rails. Yeah, and, and and our customers that are building this equipment, they might make their end product on anybody's chassis. The customer might come in and say. I want to use brand A, brand B, or brand C, and it's up to our customers to figure out how to integrate with that chassis. And that gets very complex when they have to integrate with the electrical system on the chassis as well. So, so a lot it, of challenges. It's not just a mechanical integration. They're not hanging something off of the rail. Are they tying into the electronic system? Well, that great point that it is a mechanical integration as well. And the space claim on every chassis is different. Hmm. So after treatment and where it's placed in the frame rails next to the transmission, the space claim to integrate the products to make the machine work, the hydraulics coming mm -hmm. off of mm -hmm. a PTO, a power takeoff off the transmission, um, that's an ever-growing challenge for our customers to navigate. But the electronics for this vehicle are in the cab or in the engine department. Are you actually tying into that as well? Into into the CAN bus, right? So there's a uh, chassis CAN bus, and okay. the the, uh, uh, the the OEMs will will tap into the CAN bus. That way, they can control engine speed. That way, we can control and, and read monitor engine monitor, speed. They're monitoring monitor engine speed as well as controlling. Control. Yep, okay, both. 
uh, and, uh, and, and really take control of the truck from, mm -hmm. from the, the cab and or the off-site uh, from the piece of equipment. In this case, up in the bucket itself, right? They can control the, the engine speed and, and truck functions uh, from there. So there's, there's product involved, and Bosch Rexroth supplies that product, but there's also applications. Kevin, is, is that what Morel brings to the party? Some of this application and usage work and knowledge? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Our, our goal is integrating with customers, especially in this marketplace, to understand the desired functionality they're trying to obtain on any given piece of equipment. So once we assess that and assess the current solution that they have, you know, we, we try to see where they're going and what they're trying to accomplish, and then working with our partners to accomplish that with Bosch Rex Roth um, and others. You know, from We get into cooling and other products that are out there to optimize the systems, but ultimately our knowledge of the, the optimal application of our products comes into play here of the solutions we, that we present to our customers in this marketplace. We're, we're translating the hydraulic and the controls into feet per minute or pounds or depth or weight for the OEMs. Yeah, I mean, this machine that we're looking at, there's a certain reach or extent on a mm -hmm. bucket truck that we get into a dangerous situation where we could tip the truck over, understanding that there's weight limitations that we have to consider that and the solutions that we're applying and what extent those solutions go to. Brad, talk about the products and some of the technology. What, what does Bosch Rexroth offer? What do they provide for those? Yeah, for an architecture standpoint on, on, a, on a work truck system, trying to group all of those together, there's probably there's three variables that they all have in common. Okay. Number one is the space claim that Kevin was talking about. So we've... How much room is available? Exactly. Or between how much the, it takes up? You got it. Between the frame rail and the transmission, there's not a lot of space. There's a lot of plumbing. Um, and because of lower engine speed requirements today for noise and for mm -hmm. fuel efficiency, now pump size needs to go up, right? So, mm -hmm. so it's really important that the pump size don't go this way, they go longitudinally down the frame rail. Longer, not fatter. Exactly, you got it. So uh, we, we've, we've seen this happen and Bosch Rex Ruffs has developed very compact uh, and linearly long um, versus fat, if you will, as you, I wasn't talking to you, Kevin. I'm sorry. I, I, I understand. Okay. Yeah. But linearly long to to overcome the uh, uh, overcome that uh, okay. to the point where we can we can put a 180 cc's displacement on a PTO down the frame rail um, with single inlet, single uh, single case drain, which makes it very very convenient for the and customer. And that taps engine RPM through the transmission. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. The second variable is weight. So weight's a always up against, we're always up against the wall with weight because of the on-road restrictions with work trucks. So with, with some of our compact hydraulic products, um, we're able to use aluminum die cast housings now because the, on the valves on these trucks, we can get into 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 Can we really add that much weight or can our products really add that much weight well, to a truck that it would put it in jeopardy of being but, over the weight limit? Absolutely, because anything that we can take out of our weight, mm -hmm. they can actually put stuff that's practical for the application, right? For it's the not work that tool. we put them in danger, it's that they want more weight for yeah, their Exactly, stuff. Whether, it be, whether it be fuel, whether it be water, whether it be whatever, they can put more on the truck if we okay. can reduce our weight. Okay. Yeah, there's DOT regulations that for a certain class chassis, they cannot exceed a certain weight. Uh -huh. So we've had customers ask us, how can you help us protect the end customer from overloading the weight of their truck? And we've worked with sensors and pressure sensors to sense airbag pressures mm -hmm. to try to give an indication to the end customer of the overall weight of their truck. Hmm. So Brad, you talked about two characteristics or categories. Is there a third one? There, there is. Uh, pretty much all of these particular types of equipment have to integrate, as Kevin mentioned earlier, have to integrate into the chassis electronics itself. Hmm. So. So we, we've, we've come like up... Like the CAN bus that you talked exactly about earlier? Exactly, into the CAN bus system itself to do various functionality. So uh, all of those three challenges exist with every one of these particular work truck applications. And we're, we're proud that we've come up with specific products via pumps, open loop, or closed loop, open loop, closed loop, fixed displacement, and, and variable displacement to go down that, that frame rail line. Uh, and secondly, the mobile electronics that we've developed for work trucks 
uh, and our sensor technology to handle some safety functionality, um, object, uh, object detection, which is critical for work trucks too. They're always in a city, you right, around mailboxes. This is the number one thing. They, they knock mailboxes over all the time. So object detection, just like in your car, uh, available from Bosch Rexroth. Uh, and and, uh, um, and and further electronic uh, factors within uh, within this system. So one technology I want to ask you about is we've had it actually here on Evolution Controls in the past, and that's electrification of the mobile marketplace. Is that happening in the work truck industry? Absolutely, Tim. Matter of fact, we've we've seen the work truck industry be one of the first industries to adopt electrification on their machinery. And, and that really revolves around uh, cities with the requirements of sound ordinance. So uh -huh. it's really, really important for that diesel not to be running at 2,500 RPM, sitting in front of your house at three o'clock in the morning doing, doing work on whatever they're doing. So battery powered hydraulics. Exactly, so instead of the PTO running with the engine engaged, now we do a remote or a um, EPTO, electronified PTO, with an electric motor instead of the transmission connected to a, to a pump package to which is integral to, with electronics. So instead of the transmission driving a hydraulic pump, you have a battery and an electric motor and the electric motor drives the pump. Exactly, correct. Now we have very, very minimal noise at that point in time. As a matter of fact, you can hear the birds over the electric motor in some cases. Um, and taking it to another level, uh, the work truck industry is one of the first to propel the machine for short distances under that situation also. So move it along uh, down the street exactly with electric motor rather than... It, exactly. With the same hydraulic system, with the EPTO, mm -hmm. uh, however, use a transfer case to move it down, move it down the road, uh, and that way you don't have to fire up the diesel. Hmm. Well, I know that electrification is coming on strong in the mobile marketplace, and we've talked about it. What do you see the future? is? Is hydraulics going to be replaced by electrification on work trucks? Is that what it looks like five years out from now? Kevin? Well, I would, I would take a, I would say no. Okay. And, uh, never ever. I don't ever want to say never. never I don't ever. like to be absolute <laughs> in any statements like that, but, you know, the fact that in each PTO exists, the mechanism to actuate functions in the power density of hydraulics has not been replaced today. It's not to say that some technology is not developed in the future, but that we don't see it right now. So the necessity of evolving the EPTO concept and you know, at the last work truck show that we went to that we saw that there were no, numerous chassis manufacturers showing a completely electronified chassis, electrified really? chassis. So they're driving the truck in under electric power. Hmm. And you know, so that if you look at how and why they're able to do that, it's because of the duty cycle of some of these applications. Well, if they do, if, if it's truly an electric drive chassis, there is no PTO at that point, is there? Electric. Electric, electric PTO. PTO. So same thing, we would add a motor because the, the rest of the implements will be hydraulic. Okay. The majority of them will be hy hydraulic Correct. because of the power density, uh, because of the power density that it gains. So, so, now, so where I see that, sorry to interrupt you, Brad, but where I see that going, is our OEMs that we work with mm -hmm. are asking the questions of what does that mean to the future systems we need to design, how to interact with these electronic chassis mm -hmm. and the evolving standards that are coming around that subject. So uh, it's a new horizon of collaboration with our customers that I see coming. Do you see it a, a broad ad uh, adoption in the next five years? I don't know if I'd say broad. I, I think I would say due to legislation in certain areas and um, certain ideologies of the end customers mm -hmm. uh, and companies, mm -hmm. but a, a you know brought across you know something that's scalable across the entire industry is a, a long time on the horizon. I think. Right, we run out of time. What I'm, do you, I, what do you see? Agree. Five years. I would agree with that 100 percent, Kevin, because in this industry, especially like the one we're looking at the screen, uh, power companies love electricity. Right. So <laughs> yes, they do. So if you have an electrified chassis, I think that'll accelerate. Number one, mm -hmm. as Kevin mentioned, and number two, the EPTO will accelerate lap rapidly uh, in the future on work trucks. Guys, that's all the time we have for now. I really appreciate you coming and talking to us. Maybe next year you'll come back and bring some applications, uh, electrification of work trucks. We'll fit one in the studio. Yeah.
love to see it. Yeah. Love maybe, to see it. Maybe they'll have frequent flyer miles by them. Yeah, for hopefully. Us. <laughs> hopefully. I hope so. Kevin, thank you so much. Brad, thank you very much. Appreciate being here. To learn more about Bosch Rexroth and their mobile solutions, visit BoschRexroth.com. To learn more about Morell and their systems and solutions, visit Morell-Group.com. Don't forget to subscribe to Evolution in Controls on whatever platform you use for podcasts or on YouTube for a video version so you can be updated when we release new episodes. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Tim Wilson, and remember, keep moving.